Well, hello, and thank you so much for tuning in. This is the Urain Ordonez 5 Diamond Group podcast. This is now episode two of our cocktail hour. And uh, it wouldn't be cocktails. If we didn't have <laughs> our drinks in hand. <laughs> We're going to talk a little bit about whiskey. We're going to talk a little bit about being a new agent, the challenges that it comes with, and really uh, kind of the pet peeves and solutions, if you're thinking about it or if you know somebody that is, about becoming a realtor in 2021. This is episode two. Oh. The difference, we're going to talk about the difference between a realtor and a realtor. Oh, dude, you're trying to kill me over here? <laughs> episode two, the Ray Nordonius 5 Diamond Podcast, it starts now. Welcome back. Thank you so much for tuning in. We're grateful to have you here. One of the reasons why we call this the cocktail hour is because, well, quite honestly, we enjoy a good drink. Sure do. Always drink in moderation, full disclosure. Don't drink, you know, doing other stuff. Yeah, no, we don't want no DUIs. <laughs> <laughs> but if you need an attorney. No. <laughs> it's a side note. Side we'll leave note. the link below. <laughs> Cue the... Uh, <laughs> His text message thing yeah. that goes in there. Anyways, um, with that said, uh, one of the things that I think that you and I appreciate is a good whiskey, and we like to try new things out. So we call this the cocktail hour mainly to be able to just uh, loosen up, have fun. In fact, if you're watching this in the afternoon, it's a 20-minute episode. You know, join us. Join us. We'd love to see uh, you know drop a picture and, in, in, in the chat here. Or something. And while you're pouring yourself a drink, make sure to subscribe, hit like on this video, go check out our other videos, go follow us on social media. Because at the end of the day, you know how these YouTube algorithms work. If you don't like them, if you don't fully view them, it just you know puts us at the bottom. And we really enjoy bringing this type of content to you guys and having a little fun. So hope that you guys enjoy it as well. And and so join us <laughs> by hitting those subscribe button, pour yourself a drink. Tune in. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Man. So what kind of whiskey do you like, Jared? You know, uh, I started off... Backstory, here we go. <laughs> oh, great. The first, the first time my wife, Gabby, and I went out on a date, it was at a wedding, one of my, be one of my good friend's wedding, and uh, I was DJing, and she asked me to go get her drinks, right? So she gave me her drink order, and I gave the bartender my drink order, and he turns around, and he's like, here you go, sir. And my response was, yeah, that's actually for my girlfriend. He's like, the fruity drink was for you? <laughs> well, was it a Cosmo? Uh, no, it was a Malibu and Coke or rum oh, or something that's not like bad. that. Well, a tropical drink, yeah. I, you know. But I had a long night in front of me, and he's like, you know, this. Bottom line is, my wife introduced me to whiskey and scotch. We'll, we'll just call you, you know, a safe driver. You know, you're the DD, so you wanted to take it slow. We'll just, we'll, just call, we'll just call it that. <laughs> So whiskey uh, was introduced to me actually by my wife and her father uh, and my father-in-law. Um, they had always loved the Shivas Rival and um, she, and then we started getting exposed. I found out my cousin had was a distributor in LA, so they'd hook us up with all kinds of stuff. And then as we traveled, we picked up all kinds of stuff all over the place. Um, so you know what kind of whiskey? I, I don't mind the Scotch. I don't mind the blendeds uh, and stuff. But I've really starting getting into like these single barrels mm. and uh Strong it's a stuff. different experience yeah the bourbons man they got a kick but it man it's good it definitely warms you up you know because uh you chose this one which is a good uh good choice uh, double barrel double oak yep double oak barrel uh scotch no uh bourbon yep bourbon. Bourbon. so i think i prefer something a little bit more uh Smooth. smoother something yep. True, you know, Scotch whiskey, you know, probably going to be my my choice of drink. Mm -hmm. uh, I can I can definitely enjoy this, but definitely not something that I uh, go to. I think, uh, and and I I am with you one hundred percent on that because of the smoothness. Um, really, the problem that I have though is that if it's like water, I end up treating it like water, <laughs> <laughs> and it's just not like a good. It's just not healthy to maintain yeah. that, right? So I figured uh, it depends. You know what? It, what it, I always think ahead of time before the night or the day or whatever. What kind of experience do I want to have in three or four hours? Uh, I don't want to be smashed, and that's not something I'm looking for. But I like a good drink. So sometimes, if I want to pace myself, I'll drink something a little harder. But if I'm looking for like maybe a dinner to wash it down, yeah, 
Let's move it out. You know, and it's it's funny that you mentioned that because uh, you know have, I have we were having this conversation with one of our younger agents who just turned twenty one, right. right? And so um, he you know he told us a story and his next morning and um, I think it's part of the learning experience, right? Of, right. of, of drinking. And sometimes because you don't have that experience, you don't really quite know how to drink and you can either have a really great night and a bad morning, or you can have, you know, a really great night and a good morning. But mm. um, I think that comes over time. And that's one of the things that I really enjoy about whiskey is that I can have one, maybe two, uh, you know, shots and then have a good night yep. and still be able to have a good functioning morning day. <laughs> and day yes. and versus, you know, when you were starting drinking and you were just like, you know, pounding them because you were like, oh, this is good. This is good. And then, yeah, one uh, and, too many. And, and I will tell you uh, from this side of the spectrum of the age group, <laughs> yeah. it doesn't get easier. <laughs> <laughs> when you're in your 20s, you can handle some of that stuff. But man, definitely. I mean, no. I just turned 32. So I, I, <laughs> uh, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. <laughs> quick tip quick tip if you're going to be you know you know enjoying your evening chase everything down with a bottle of water <laughs> or glass water in fact i usually have with anything at dinner i'll usually have at least one or two glasses of water because it dilutes it for one but for two it just you know it helps your, your kidneys you know you know talking about that um had a good friend and client uh that invited us over for dinner one day and he mixed it his whiskey it was a high-end really good whiskey on its own but he would mix it with coconut water oh, yeah. uh and he, so he said you know his, his ideology and and i mean i would say scientifically it's probably proven uh the, the alcohol the reason you get drunk is because you dehydrate right you get more alcohol volume than than water volume uh so Coconut water hydrates you, mm -hmm. so it kind of counter affects the the effects of the alcohol, mm. and it almost tastes like a wine, like a whiskey wine. Mm. So I definitely recommend it. Not every type of coconut water, because I've tried it. Not every type of whiskey tastes good. So I would call that be... I would call that a juxtaposition of a drink. Yeah, because <laughs> <laughs> it, it it's polar opposites on that. When we were in Scotland uh, at the Deanston Distillery. They had water in vials with droppers. And uh, part of their tasting experience was using the spring water from their local rivers mm. uh, that was natural and a part of what was already being um, distilled. Right. And uh, they, they serve it neat. Three drops of water, and it changes the experience there. So the water that you put in there has an effect, especially if you're doing something that... that well, that it's not even necessarily the water, it's... The uh, quantity of water, that like pre precision, precision, precision. precision. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really cool experience. In fact, uh, if anybody ever makes it off to Scotland, totally recommend any of those uh, scotch or whiskey distilleries out there, man. Just, of course. If you guys ever there. have any travel uh, questions, pretty much anywhere in the world, this guy's been there. Him and his wife love to travel. So drop any uh, or drop in the comments below what's your favorite destination that you have been and what's the favorite destination you would love to be in and then let us know if you want us to talk about that in one of the next episodes about maybe our travel experiences mostly his travel experiences because <laughs> I don't have too many but he's got a quite a few but I mean if that's something that interests you guys we don't we, this isn't just a real estate podcast this is a little bit of of everything so. right yeah no definitely in fact uh, I just got word that we are booking Whoa. you. You know what? We're going to leave that for an episode. Okay. Because All that's right. a whole story of, <laughs> like, no, that's, that's a really, really good story. Oh, and so we're, we're actually going to just talk a whole episode about bleep. <laughs> <laughs> Insert bleep here. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Here's a good quiz then. If you're listening this far in, which continents have I been to or have not been to? Let's put it there. Uh, and then we'll, we'll go from there. So we'll, we'll answer a few questions. So please go in the comments, answer these questions. Uh, you know, where do you think he's going and where do you think he has been? And then we'll answer those questions. And any other questions that you guys want as far as travel, we'll answer on that episode. But that episode is going to be really cool because <laughs> uh, I think they've, they've been waiting. How long have you been waiting for this trip? Well, mostly your wife. Well, yeah, not me. But yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, it was part of the agreement that uh, we had to reach this one of these destinations within our first five years of marriage. Uh, we only made it to all except two. We made it to one shortly thereafter, and this has been the last one that's been remaining. So we are now reaching 15 years of marriage, 
And uh, well, she'll be able to get there before she's 40. So time is irrelevant. Yes. It's just a matter of making it happen, right? Yeah. So Focused. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about that. But anyways, cool. let's get into our episode of today. Well, yeah, you were speaking, speaking of traveling. Yeah. Our episode today is about uh, talking about agents and the new agent experience. Now, The road to becoming an agent the road and to becoming an agent. the path that you take. Yeah. And so one of the things that agents deal with in this business when we first get started is, you know, how do I balance my, my, my life? <laughs> Uh, how do I go have fun, but at the same time generate new business? You have an experience that you had thought. Well, I think I think that uh, there's this uh, stigma or this uh, perception that we live a lavish life in real estate. Um, we don't. <laughs> well, <laughs> you could. You definitely could. But it's not as easy as it makes it like selling sunset, million dollar listing, like all those, uh, you know, portray easiness. Like it's so easy to become an agent. And and to a certain extent, to become an agent isn't really that hard. You, you know, take a 90 hour course, you, you know, pass a test, you know, pay your, your fees and dues mm -hmm. and you become an agent. Yeah. But, and as one of our agents showed, you can do that in less than three weeks. <laughs> yeah. 12 days. We have an agent that did it in 12 days. So if, so to to answer your, maybe a question you have, how long does it take to become an agent? Twelve days. You can do it in twelve days. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You I could, did in seventeen. He he actually beat me, so I'm proud yeah. of him for that. <laughs> and, and and I mean, you could take as long as or, or as little as you want. Right. It's just a matter of how much determination and time you have on your hands, right? Uh, but there's a lot of challenges that are 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 that go with it, because if you come from a nine to five job or or some type of you know job security, you know on what day you're going to get paid and how often you're going to get paid. And you even have an idea of how much you're going to get paid based on if you're a full-time employee, you work for 40 hours, you know, you know that your, your check is going to come and it's X amount after all taxes, fees, and deductions that you get taken. Uh, and you kind of budget based on that. But an agent... An agent is whenever you close a deal. And when it comes to starting your business, uh, it's that's the hardest part, you know, mm -hmm. because you're literally walking in with uh, possibly no or little experience in, in the industry as itself. And then you've got to generate uh, leads and try and convert them and then get them into contract. And at that point, you got to try and help them to get it closed. <laughs> so there's multiple layers just to get to that point, um, which being able to get there is great. But then depending on which brokerage you with, you're with, that commission that you get doesn't necessarily mean you're getting the full commission. So most people look at a realtor and they say, oh man, look at how much they're making. The market's going up. My house is, you know, 350,000. They're getting 3%. That's as far as the conversation most people have. Mm -hmm. And they don't recognize everything that gets tied behind that. So most of the common real, real estate brokerages will have some sort of split or fee on top of that. And then if you're a new agent, you probably have a pretty aggressive split, like 50-50. And then unless you're producing certain amounts, you're not going to see that change. So that, that becomes a... Well, and if you're part of a bigger brokerage, like a bigger corporation, you might have some type of uh, franchise fees. Yeah. <laughs> so you have <laughs> splits, you have franchise that. fees, uh, you have broker additional compensation fees. Transaction fees. Transaction fees. fees. And then remember, our... our our pay is gross. Right. So that's not including taxes that you're going to pay at the end of the year. Right. So even though you sell a $350,000 house at 3% commission, do the math, that's what, like 10,500, you know, so then you walk away with six, let's say five, mm -hmm. then you've got to you split your taxes, right? Right. Plus whatever else you your know. living expenses. And ideally you're going to put what 10 or 15 back in your business. Right. And that's going to hold you over to your next deal. So if you have one in the pipeline, great. You're going to have another paycheck, but nothing is sure. We've done, you know, 15, 21 day deals that get extended to 30, 45 days. I've had, I've had one that I just worked uh, for two months. It was a probate one and lost it in court. Right. So now no, no paycheck. You know? Now I got to go back to shopping with my buyers. And so all these challenges are what people don't tell you, what other agents don't tell you. You know, guys, you know, from Million Dollar Listing, they show you, you know, the, the, the nice big Rolex. They, they have their limo drivers. Right. They, they yeah, make, the it, make it seem like it's easy. And once you get to a certain level, yeah, it could become easy because now you have a full team, you have you know, a transaction coordinator, you have everyone helping you out to produce more business. But when you're at the bottom, when you're at the beginning, that's not the started? case. No, that's true. That is absolutely true. And so uh, the, the, the stretch and really the, the, the push 
that uh, we encourage our agents to do is put it in your mind that for the next three years you're doing nothing but pushing, pushing, pushing. And what I mean by that is that you're doing everything that needs to be done to build your business. If you're doing it right, in 18 months you're going to see a tipping point. And that's where you start saying, oh, wow, some of this business is coming back to me. And it's going, you know, now it's referrals and now it's other people. But for the first three years, you, A, you need to be pushing, pushing, pushing. And B, surround yourself with some, with some great team members. Uh, and ideally, get with a brokerage who's really going to support you in your, in your first, you know, few years of growth. Because you got all the different business models out there. You've got 100% commission, but you may not get the training. You'll get 50% commission, you get some training. Then you can go into like the cloud-based virtual, and now you've got to do everything on your own, which is cool. You know, that's that's a really good environment. Yeah, and the, I think the the first thing that you need to do as a new agent is go interview other brokerages, other teams. Don't take the first one. Don't take the first one. <laughs> uh, and remember, you're the one interviewing them, mm -hmm. uh, because even though you're new, it's your there's, business. There, it's your business. So if you want to be successful then you need to be able to ask certain questions uh, and then also kind of determine what direction you want because maybe uh, you always want to be a part of a team. Maybe you always want to have that freedom that there's a team that you pay your 50%, uh, but in exchange you get a transaction coordinator, you get you know an internal sales agent, and all you're really doing is opening doors and, and showing properties, negotiating them, and then you pass them on to, to the transaction coordinator. So if that's something that you're interested, look for a team that offers that. But if you are looking to build out your entire business from ground up, maybe possi possibly uh, down the line, uh, build your own team, well then you're going to work a little bit harder and it's going to take you a little bit longer uh, to do it. I'm sure everybody that's out there listening to this podcast knows somebody in their family that has A, been a realtor or is currently one. Uh, as the economy improves and home prices go up and the news starts advertising about how great home prices are, we see an increase in the number of agents getting on board. And so if you know somebody who is in that space and you want them to succeed, support them, help them, give them that support and let them know like, you know, you want them to grow if they're serious about the business. Uh, there is a reason why the turnover rate as a realtor is over 90% within the first five years, uh, mainly because of all the challenges that it takes and the lack of like true training that's available to, to agents on that. Back to the question about traveling as a new agent. You went to a uh, overseas destination and what were your fears your concerns your challenges because you were just a few months into this business right so let's let me backtrace before i answer that question right so mm -hmm. i think there's some good benefits of of becoming an agent and having your own business right mm -hmm. so um give you an example you know i show up to the office between 9 and 10 i don't have a specific time that i show up I can show up at 901 or I can show up at 959. Unlike a regular job, you know, where you have a clock in and clock out time. So that's one of the cool things. But also because we don't have a clock out time, we can also be working late. Mm. So allowing uh, this allows us for or to take time off whenever we want to. Right. As long as we can afford it. And that's that's the thing. If you can afford it. <laughs> and so your your sister in law had asked me a few weeks before my uh, Italy trip. So one of my dream locations was was Italy. Um, that's that was on my bucket list. And one of the things was to take my parents because my parents we were always would vacation either L.A. where family was or Mexico where family was. And it was it was, they didn't feel like a vacation. It felt like work because we were trying to visit everybody that they knew and try to say hi to everybody and come back even more tired. Then sightsee, then do anything other than maybe eat some good food. Uh, so I always wanted to take them somewhere other than Mexico. So accomplished, right? Booked our trip, got killer uh, Black Friday deal mm -hmm. uh, for the March of the following year, about maybe February. Sister-in-law is like, hey, are you excited? Are you, you know, ready to go to Italy? That's so fun. And I was just like, I don't want to talk about it. What do, you, what do you mean? You know, like she couldn't fathom, like, you're going to Italy. Why, why don't you want to talk about it? You should be excited. And I was just like, I don't want to talk about it. And even getting on the plane, I was just like kind of upset with myself because... I didn't have another deal in the pipeline. I had just lost one client, and I'm here going on a trip uh, to Italy. Everything's paid for, so we're you know I'm good there. Mm -hmm. I have you know money for for spending, but I don't have anything come back come to come back to right. Come back now what? And so you know once once I got on the plane, I was like okay you know I, I'm not gonna ruin the vacation for for everyone uh, that was going. I had a friend going with us as well, so. 
Um, so I, I didn't, you know, I was like, just forget it. It's, oh, well, uh, just enjoy the vacation. There's nothing I can do, right? Uh, luckily, while I was there, my client called me back that was going to wait till the summer. They had found a house that they wanted to see. Jared showed them, which was very grateful, came back, closed the deal, had a paycheck. <laughs> but those are the stresses that you go through of owning your own business, of, of, of building your own business, is you don't know when a paycheck is going to come or there's unexpected things that come up that you need to be prepared for mentally and financially. Mm-hmm. Yep, I remember that. <laughs> and so I've seen that over and over again in my life, uh, especially as a realtor. It's like, uh, and that's part of like the conflict Gabby and I have had for many years is like, you know, we, you know I'm, I'm in the same boat as you. Like I'm concerned about not just coming back, but you know, what's right after that. Um, and the, the truth of the matter is when you're in your business and you're doing the work, um, it's kind of like a flywheel. It kind of keeps going on some level, but you still have to keep pushing. And I have learned, and I'm not saying this is uh, gospel, I'm not saying that this is guaranteed, <laughs> but I have learned that if you set a time preach, aside, preach, and preach, <laughs> um, and this is actually not just travel, this is more in your life, especially as an entrepreneur, carving out the time that is purposely made for family, carving out the time that is purposely made for your personal development or your, you know, your mindset carving out the time to relax and unwind are all things that will that you have to do like if you don't do that you're going to burn yourself out you're going to fry and then you're just going to be done and you're going to hate it uh, but by by self and sales is all about self improvement and practicing that that aspect not just on a daily basis but on a trip becomes really valuable and people respect your space a lot more. And in fact, uh, every time that we've gone on a trip and I had the same scenario, I don't have anything in the pipe, I somehow get two or three deals with, like, like lined up right as, as we're coming back. And so take more vacations is what you're saying. And that's what I keep hearing. <laughs> My wife says, you need to take more vacations, more vacations. So yes, it is true. Well, I think one of the biggest things is, remember it's your business, so you're gonna get out of it what you put into it, right? Yeah. So if you really dedicate time and effort to it you're going to get back a lot however you know this has to be something that you're going to be passionate about because putting in a lot of time and effort into something you really don't care for just because it looks like it can make you a lot of money you're going to be miserable doing it and so that's one of the biggest things is that when we started building our, our team we weren't looking just for anybody because we can teach anybody how to sell real estate and the transaction and all that stuff, but who really wants to help out clients? Who really wants to uh, you know, do the best thing for the, for the client? Because when you put money first, you've already lost. When you put the client first, money will follow because more clients are gonna refer you business because they're gonna see that you are honest, you're ethical, you really care about them, and they're gonna want to do business with you and their, their friends are gonna rave about you and they're gonna tell, you, tell them, don't go with anybody else go with Isaac go with Jared because they they truly care about you uh, but when when they can people can tell when you do it for money amen to that <laughs> amen. keep preaching keep preaching <laughs> <laughs> yes well that's where uh, our, at least you've now learned about uh, our perspective on <laughs> ice cold baby that's, that's, that's an ideology that we have here at the five diamond group is people first our clients first our priorities are, are top of the list uh, in terms of helping our clients and doing what's right. Um, so that, that, that's something that if you are a new agent or if you know somebody that is thinking about it, help them from that perspective. Help them identify why are you getting into this business. If it's money-based, you know, you know, have fun with it. But just like Simon Sinek says, start with why if you're doing something you enjoy and you're you're you know you're pushing towards a goal that that is beyond who you are now fantastic have fun with it and find a, a group that will will support you and hold you accountable to, to to reaching those goals which is really really fun when and, you get there and here's the other thing right so once you've built a business once you build a brand and you have a good source of income, then you can dab out into other ventures. Yeah. And now it becomes about money, about how you know how to produce more money. But your your primary business should be something you you are passionate about. Yeah. And keep in mind too, you are building a new business. This is a business, you know, and so you're building a brand, whether you like it or not. Suck it up and do it. <laughs> <laughs> 
So well, sir. any, any uh, tips for new agents or anybody who wants to become an agent? Push. 18 months. Push, push, push. Um, I had the opportunity to see agents come and go over the course of several years uh, from the sidelines and watching them do it. When I'm on the front lines and I got to see it happen, I got to fine tune what does it take for an agent to, to, to really kind of grow and scale their business up. And you know what? I keep saying it. You're kind of a case study. <laughs> you, you've shown what it takes to make it happen, and that's pretty awesome, man. Uh, so proud of you for that, brother. Thank but, you, um, that's, that's as far as an agent goes. The, the, the key factors is if you are brand new starting, surround yourself with people who are like mine and that will willing to teach you. Absorb the information. If you're, on a, if you're on your own, align yourself with top producers or people who are willing to teach you and absorb everything you can for the first three years. Count on three years. Just, just put it in your mind that three years is going to be that window where the tipping point happens and now you've got this impression that's going on. And then from there, just learn as much as you can. Take care of your dues, take care of your business, take care of your family. Uh, but at the end of the day, make sure your clients are on that list as well and have fun. Just have fun, fun, fun. Because it is fun. Yeah, my, my advice is going to be uh, go find a friend, somebody who's an agent, and go shadow them for two, three days. Uh, go see what they do because it's not as lavish as you would think. So make sure that it's something that you really want to commit to because it is going to you know, cost you a couple thousand dollars just to get licensed and then ex additional money uh, to continue running your business. Uh, so you know, make sure that you align yourself with the right people, the right team. Uh, I highly recommend joining a team uh, because they're going to be able to teach you uh, the things, the little things that the books don't teach you. And then you can decide to kind of venture out on your own, or maybe you like that team setting and you want to stay on the team. Uh, and so just kind of uh, explore, read, uh, ask questions. You can always feel free to reach out to us, uh, ask any questions. Or if you guys are looking to hire or go on to a team or a brokerage, uh, maybe there's certain questions you want to ask and you don't know what the questions those are. So maybe you can, you can reach out to us and let us know and we can definitely guide you through that and kind of show you uh, kind of what you're looking for. Dig it, man. All right. Anything else? No, that's pretty much it. Awesome. Save, save money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can do it. It's just, uh, you know, just getting yourself aligned with the right people. The industry is changing. The role of an agent is changing. Uh, what it was five or even 10, 15 years ago is not the same as what we will need to have in the next five years. Uh, you need to be more tech savvy. You need to be a little more, uh, willing to, to be adaptable. Uh, but more importantly, being the knowledge broker, you've got to be able to do it. That does it for this episode of the Urano Ordonias 5 Diamond Group podcast. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe down below. Uh, press replay and serve yourself one of these. Enjoyed having you on board. Anything else? Oh, we'll catch you guys on the next episode. Dig it. <laughs>